lazy keyword. Currently we are in section 12 and we are about to check out the last video that is the third video of this section. In this video we will talk about what is lazy initialization. So within our application here let us define a variable such as value pi equal to 3.14. Now within our main function let us write some code. So here this is my sum initial code in the form of print statement. And suppose down below here we have some more code. Again some dummy code in the form of print statement. Now let us assume this is our program. Now within our program if you notice we are not even using the value of pi within our function. So if you run the application right now even if you are not using it then also the memory is being allocated to the variable of pi. So it is just a waste of memory. And there are certain scenarios where we often declare a variable but hardly use it within our application. Or sometimes we may not even use it. How to deal with such situation? How to prevent the waste of memory in case we are not using the variable? So for that the lazy initialization comes into picture. So the syntax is very simple. After you declare your variable use the by keyword followed by the lazy lambda function. Now once you do it within this you can actually put this value here. So what exactly I mean by this statement I will shortly let you know. Now suppose if you run the application right now even if we have this pi variable within our program but still no memory will be allocated to this variable of pi just because we are lazily initializing our variable which means that unless you use it within your program the variable won't be initialized. So here let us use val area1 equal to let us find the area of the circle with radius of 4. So this time when you run the application and if you are trying to access the variable of pi then only this variable pi will be initialized to 3.14. So in this way we can actually make effective use of the memory allocation. Now next time suppose if you try to access the variable pi again. So this time the variable pi won't be initialized again. The value of pi will be loaded from the cache memory. That is once you use the variable for the first time it is actually saved in the cache memory. And for the second time the value is loaded from that cache memory. Now let us take a step ahead and discuss further. Now this value pi is currently of the type of non-nullable type. But you can also use the nullable type of data. By using the question mark here it is allowed in case of lazy initialization. Now apart from this you can also use the var keyword instead of val keyword. But accordingly you have to make changes within your code. Which is right now out of scope for this video. So the lazy initialization was designed to prevent unnecessary initialization of the objects like we saw in this video. Now your variable will not be initialized unless you use it within your code. Thus making the effective use of memory allocation. And once you initialize the variable next time when you use it you get the value from the cache memory. Now the lazy initialization is basically thread safe. Which means that the variable is initialized in the thread where it is used for the first time. Now suppose next time you are using this variable in some other thread or you can say some other thread try to access the variable. So in that case the value is loaded from the cache memory. So it is basically the detailed explanation of the point that I have mentioned it here for you. Now in the end you can use lazy initialization for mutable as well as immutable variables. That is var or val. And also you can use it for nullable or non-nullable data types. It is totally up to your wish. So that's all for this video. So finally we have reached the end of this section. In this section initially we checked out what are null safety operators that are used to avoid the null pointer exception. In that video we checked out what is a safe call operator, how to use safe call with let, what is Elvis operator. And in the end we saw the non-null assertion operator. Well all these three operators are used to avoid the null pointer exception. But when you are using non-null assertion operator so in that case it might throw null pointer exception if you use it on the null object. Now proceeding we saw what is a late init keyword and also 
how to lazily initialize our values in Kotlin. So coming up next in the next section, we will check out more on Kotlin programming concepts.